Hey, this is Matt, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do some quick mastering in GarageBand version 10 something and later. Um, so GarageBand looks so much like Logic, I find myself calling it Logic when I'm talking. So sorry if I do that. This is GarageBand. Um, you can tell because it says it up here now. Uh, what I'm going to do is just drop that um, same mp3 in that I used for the audacity mastering tutorial and you can actually do this the steps that I'm going to show you uh, within your uh, assignment for loop project but just for the sake of expediency I'm going to drop uh, this piece of audio in here and you'll see the waveform uh, show up here in just a second um, there we go um, now what you have to do to get to the mastering block is um, show the master track and I'm gonna hide the library up here in the upper left hand corner this is where if you're using MIDI loops you want to change sounds or um, you would do that up here but let's get that out of the way let's go to um, track and then show master track so there is a key shortcut there you can use that um, or you can just do this and now if I click on this or double click on it hmm nothing happens well oddly there seems to be this hot uh, area over here if I click on the actual icon well then it shows up down in the bottom and it looks like a piece of outboard hardware it's not um, uh, it's actually just a bunch of plugins kind of like the old version it just looks really fancy now um, and if you want to get deeper into the um, the parameters here you can hit I for info and then this is uh, the ordering of the effects as they're shown on the hardware interface thing over here. Um, just, I know that you're going to be interested in clicking around there. If you go to effects, um, any track can be, you can add some echo or uh, reverb to it um, in on your loop tracks. Uh, this is where you would change that sort of master echo or master reverb. Don't worry about that for now. Uh, we probably won't really be using them uh, for this project. Uh, you can just individually um, affect uh, each channel if you'd like. Let's go back to output and we have uh, information on. Notice um, if I flick this button here, the actual uh, effect here will show up blue or bluer instead of gray. Um, so you can turn them on or off this way. Uh, you can actually do it by clicking on the left hand side of the handle here and that'll switch them as well. Um, and then if I turn the effect off, notice when I click over here, that button goes down. Um, so what is going on here? Well, in a, in a pinch, <laughs> you can just do the limiter and that is uh, you know what the, the W1 does over in Audacity land. Um, but this is a really complicated sort of array here. What it does is it has incredibly light compression and it basically squeezes or squashes um, the entire audio signal at a two to one ratio. And I know that because if I click on the middle of it here, it'll pull up that compressor and it says, oh, ratio two to one. So you can actually go in and nitpick um, if you want to. Um, so it, it, it's... Uh, compresses it first, it runs it through an exciter, which basically brings up, uh, it, it resonates um, at higher frequencies. You can change the frequency that resonates at, and, and the, the end result is it, it sounds uh, more crisp. Um, I, this, this, it sounds nice, um, but if you overuse it, it can sound really bad quickly. Um, and, you know, hopefully if you've done a good job of mixing everything together, it might not need it. Um, so, oh, there is an EQ as well, and you can get into the, the bones of the EQ over here. Or, actually, this one is engaged right here. Well, let's let's check it out. Uh, if you go here, and I turn this up, and I go over to EQ, up, oh, sure enough, it's over there. So, you can, it's fun to play with knobs. Um, you know, if you go over here, you can actually change the center frequency that it's at. Kind of cool more powerful um, control so you can actually uh, you know deal with some problems with your mix if here and then um, the limiter as you turn this knob up 
actually it brings the threshold down as uh, hopefully you've watched the other uh, tutorial uh, mastering in audacity so it basically just squashes more of the signal or limits more of the signal um, so you can flick some of these switches and see which ones make you really happy but i guarantee you'll probably get the best results here with the limiter um, so i'm just going to loop a little section here and click through them really quickly <laughs> Does it sound like it gets louder? More dynamic. Very subtle. More guitar. <laughs> Nasty, too tinny and bright. Let's turn that on. And then double compress it. And there you go. I'm starting to sound pretty slick like that. Um, but that's a little overview of the mastering block. And it's just like the old version. Once you are happy with the product, you go to share and then you can go to uh, export song to disc. Um, different than the old version in terms of the um, audio quality because you can do AIF, F at 16 bit or 24 bit. You can pick those there. Obviously, you can't do a WAV file. You'd have to use another tool like. Uh, I don't know, Audacity maybe, to change an AF to a wave. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Uh, anyway, good luck. Have fun.